oh my God, you guys, I cannot believe I can finally announce this. <laughs> it has literally been years in the making. And just a couple months ago, it was one book and now it's another. And for years, I was writing about my life and then I got sick and the malpractice and all this stuff. And all that information is available here. But what I wanted to write my book about was something that would bring light to people that were in a darkness that, like I was for many, many years. And what makes me happy, what lights me up is cooking really healthy meals. So if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see I have so many recipes already there. But what I wanted to do was make them gluten-free, sugar-free, dairy-free, meat-free, and just start with the basics. And obviously I eat all those things. You can add them in. But I wanted to create a really fun cookbook filled with delicious healthy recipes, but at the same time offer guidance in the personal development area, provide some life lessons based on my own life, and then, you know, just have a bunch of food and fun and a lot of facts served to you on a silver platter. So if you are ready to get organized, be creative, and put in the work to take your business and life to that next level you deserve to be at, as well as create some delicious healthy recipes, whether it's for you because you want a meal prep, or for your family, or for your friends for a girl's night in, everything is messy is exactly what you're going to need. So it is available to pre-order right now. So go to everythingismessy.com. You can read so much more in the book and everything that you'll get out of the pre-order. I am releasing um, never seen before recipes that aren't even going to be in the book. So they're exclusive to you. I have an exclusive community where I'm going to be doing like a live cooking show. I have chapters and edits and final edits and all that good stuff that I'm going to be sharing with you in our private community. So just check out everythingismessy.com. You can read a lot more about why I decided to shift this way. And I'm just so pumped up about it. I'm so excited. And if you look on my Instagram, now that Reels is out, I've been posting so many more recipes and I'm getting incredible feedback from my friends that are my taste testers as well as everybody that's trying them on their own. So again, visit everythingismessy.com. You can pre-order the book today and I'm so excited I can finally share this with you. Welcome to the Happy Workaholic Podcast. I'm your host, Kellyanne Gorman. Over the past 20 years, I've worked in beauty, luxury, corporate, and service-driven industries. I created the opportunity in these careers and in my own businesses that allowed me to travel the world, experience once in a lifetime events, and build brands while providing my expertise to clients all around the globe. Life is short, and when you're given a second chance, you better believe I'm going to take it, celebrate it, and share it with you. This show is intended to elevate your mind, upgrade your business, enhance your life, and become part of a positive and uplifting community. If you're ready to take your business and life to that next level you deserve to be at, this is the show for you. Inspiration, motivation, and determination are what got me to where I am today. Tune in every week to hear from myself, other entrepreneurs, professional patients, small business owners, and fellow podcasters who will be featured on the show. I'm here to remind you to work hard, share your story, follow your dreams, and never ever give up. Thanks for taking the time to subscribe to the Happy Workaholic Podcast. Today's episode starts now. Hello, hello, you guys. I have such an fantastic guest with me today. We are actually recording live from PodMax, and this episode is being recorded in July, and I'm so excited for you to hear it. So welcome to the show, Tom. How are you? Hey, aloha. I'm excited to be here, Kelly. Tom is obviously in Hawaii, and we were just chit-chatting a little bit before how the pandemic has affected everything. And today we're interviewing for the I Chose This Life series, so I want to dig into your journey of entrepreneurship and then even your podcast, because you are also a fellow podcaster. I love interviewing other podcasters. (laughs) I don't don't know know that I consider myself a podcaster yet, because I just started, but I'm I'm learning. You just have to start. (laughs) Yeah, it's cool. Like anything, right? Even in entrepreneurship, like you just have to... You just have to start. You just have to get that first thing going. So, yeah, it's um, boy, yeah, entrepreneurship. <laughs> right. I wanna, I wanna say one thing before you dive in. I was reading your bio, and you started your businesses, which I know you're gonna get into. You were actually burned out from the restaurant industry, and I was in the restaurant industry for many years. And I always, and I grew up in a family restaurant, so I've always said that. 
people that come from the restaurant industry, you have to have your hands in a lot of pieces. You're in the front of the house, the back of the house, your service is on point A. You know, you have to have all your ducks in a row and know how to hustle and just take anything that comes thrown your way. So I feel like anybody that's come from the restaurant industry, they have the backbone that they need for entrepreneurship. Do you believe that? Yeah, I can see that. I mean, it's being a restaurant, I was a restaurant manager, right? And mm-hmm. it's a very stimulus oriented oriented job, right? Like you have lots of, you know, there's the kitchen, the front, like you're right, like you're constantly, uh, you're doing different things all the time, which mm-hmm. makes the job feel not so mundane. Yeah. Right? Like the, I could never imagine just sitting in an office or oh my God, I would eight die. or nine hours a day. Like I would go, like I would be at the water cooler. I'd be like talking to people. Like I have to be all over the place, right? Like I just could, I just couldn't handle that. So, yeah, I think you know, I think there's part of it that's like, yeah, there were really good things um, that I brought from the restaurant industry, but you know, there were also things that um, I think I had to, you know, when you talk about entrepreneurship, I would say for me entrepreneurship has been an act of becoming like I thought like yeah I'm an entrepreneur and then I started doing it and I thought oh my god I have no clue like I was so I guess I don't know if the word's naive or there were just so many things that I didn't consider before I jumped in right I just had this kind of like maybe I was just in that mode that a lot of people are where it's kind of like fantasy mode. You have this dream of what it's going to be like, right? Oh, yeah. Image in your head. And then you get into it and you're like, uh-oh. It's, it's not that it's bad. It's not bad. But it's just different than how you pictured it in your head, right? Mm-hmm. And so, you know, for me, like in the restaurant business, the things that I had to work out of were, you know, just this, you know, the restaurant business is kind of like work hard, stay out late. You know, um, you're, you just kind of like when you're in the restaurant, you have to focus, but you don't have to really think about what goes on outside. And so, you know, I've really had over the years, I've had to work on becoming the type of person that's, that's disciplined, that, you know, sets goals, that's putting them out there, um, that's working towards them every day. Um, you know, another thing, uh, that I kind of, uh, I guess struggle with from the beginning is like I always want to go to the advanced version of things mm. right <laughs> like hey like oh you need to know how to do social media well here's the basics I'm like eh, isn't there like an advanced course I can go through that'll just give me like what's the you know the best way to do it and so I have to really like work constantly every day to focus on the fundamentals and the basics because, and this is one of the views I think I had of entrepreneurship that was not entirely accurate. It's the fundamentals and the basics that get you to success. Mm -hmm. Right. And a lot of times when I'm talking to people that are struggling to get a business off the ground or they're struggling to have any kind of success, it's because they're not consistently doing the fundamentals. And when you tell them like, Hey, you should be doing the fundamentals. It's almost like they don't, they don't want to hear it. You know, it's like, uh, but that's, that's the boring kind of daily grind work, you know, but those are the things that are super important to hitting your goals, doing those first, just taking action on those things. Like, like you said in the beginning, just getting started. I love that you, I love that you touched on that because something that I preach to my clients and online when I do live videos and even on my show, like all the time is that you have to be organized. It doesn't have to be my way of being organized. It can be your, you need to find your own way because if you start doing somebody else's way, you're going to hate doing it and you're not gonna do it and then you fall out of place and then you don't have systems in place and then, like you said, the fundamentals, like whether you're organized in your kitchen, you're organized with your systems online, whether you have notebooks, you have to create a system in order to be successful, one that works for you. So it's like trial and error, just like entrepreneurship. You can fail at businesses, you can be really successful overnight, and you just have to find your own rhythm in order for you to keep being consistent because then that's what's going to bring you the success. But something that you talk about, which a lot of people don't talk about is failure right 
Oh yeah, Fail- failure is a, one of my favorite sayings is never let failure go to your head. Mm-hmm. And I used to always joke that that's what my mom used to always tell me. Tom, never let failure go to your head. And uh, that's I so good. That because I think the way that you handle failure when you're trying to get a business off the ground is what's really going to be the key to determining whether you're successful or not. Can you can you brush it off? Can you, you know, stop and look at it for what it is, not a, not something that's permanent, right? That failure is not something that's permanent. It's, you know, can you really look and try to find out what was the learning experience here? What is, what is the, what are the good things to be pulled from this situation that I can take with me? And what are the bad things that I just need to let go you know I think so many so many times when people start a business they think every decision they make is a permanent one and it usually starts when they are going to pick their business name that's Mm. usually the first roadblock right I'm going to start a business oh now I need a name and then it's like for some people it's months and they've they still don't even have a name right and so they can't move forward in what they're doing because they haven't been able to just make that decision because we I think tend to feel that those decisions are permanent. If I pick the wrong thing and it doesn't work out, and it's like I have changed the name of my businesses multiple times over the years. Some of them have been successful when I did it, and guess what? Nobody notices. Like, mm. don't even, like I know, isn't that even, the craziest thing? Even says anything. They're just like, <laughs> uh, like okay, it's like this thing that I was so like ah uh, worried about turned out wasn't that big of a deal, right? And so I think with failure. And, and for me with entrepreneurship, it's just been getting okay with like, just getting okay with not being okay sometimes, right? With just, Hey, look like, you know, yeah, that didn't work out. I feel pretty crappy about it, but you know what? No big deal. Nobody's going to remember that thing two months from now, six months from now, a year from now, like I can do better. I can find another way to, to do it and continue to move forward. It's so true, especially when you are visible online. We put so much pressure on ourselves. Like, oh my God, I have a typo. I can't even tell you how many times I've gone into an Instagram post. As soon as soon as everything I do is automated. So it funnels everywhere. And I find it typo. I'm like, oh my God. And I immediately go in there and edit it because of one such a perfectionist. And I'm like, the world does not give a shit about what my typos look like. But it's funny, like... um you're talking about failure. I never really vocalize fail. I, I tell my story to my clients as an example, but I've never really talked about it on my show. And this show has been around for like three years. And especially when it comes to entrepreneurship and owning a business. And until I was interviewed on another show and they were asking me about my failures. And I loved that because no one's ever asked me that. And I said, honestly, I, I, lo- I was a pro makeup artist for about 14 years traveled the world. It was amazing. I got burned out because at the end of the day, these corporations, they were about the numbers. I was traveling the world, so I was burned out, but I wanted it to be about the art and I missed the craft. And so I just, I got burned out. So I, I resigned and I took a break and I'm like, I need my own makeup line. I need a makeup line that's going to be purchased by teens, by my billionaire clients, by everybody in between. Like, I was so focused on the name because it had to have a meaning and everything in my life happened in threes. So I came up with the name and I did everything myself. I can't even tell you how much money I dumped into this cosmetics line. I met with chemists in New York, LA, Miami. We created a whole formula. I launched with 32 products all by myself. I went to the postal office. I lined up all of my $5 priority boxes. I had all my pink bubble wrap to match my branding. And I was ready to go. I designed my website. You know, the trend here is I did everything myself. And what I took away from that was you can't do that. I mean, just creating the product alone, the development part, the advertising, the marketing, the in-person events, the selling, the website, the tech, like everything, the postage. I had some assistance, but I did everything myself because I didn't trust anyone. I didn't want any mistakes. I'm a crazy perfectionist. I'm like, you can't do that. <laughs> you cannot do that. And that's what I learned. Like, you have to know, like, 
things and especially not things, but businesses or business ideas um, come into your life for a reason and you create them for a reason. They're successful, they fail, but it's always going to teach you something at the end of the day, right? So that's what I learned from that. So I always use that as an example, even for myself when I go to do something else, like even during this pandemic, because I do have a podcasting business, it was crazy because so many businesses are bringing their um, company on the internet and they're like, how can we make money? A podcast can do that. I hired like five people to do things for me. None of my friends believed me that I did that, first of all. And then I did check up on them so many times and they're like, just leave them alone. They're not going to want to work with you again. (laughs) I'm like, I know, but there's a typo. I just need her to fix this really quick. Like, But I did it and I I let the reins go and I was like, I need this in my business. And at the end of the day, it all worked out. And I remember because of my failure. So when it comes to your business and you've actually um, had about 50,000 students come through your business, that's a lot. Yeah, we, (laughs) yeah, we, yeah, well, well, I got, I got very, I got very lucky, right? So I'm a, you know, I don't have any. Uh, professional marketing schooling or education or anything that you know I had a hobby which was I liked to I liked to build websites I was interested in search engine optimization you know I had this desire early on to figure out a way to make money online which by the way never really never panned out right yeah like I couldn't I couldn't do it but in the process of you know doing uh of of trying to do that, I learned a skill set, right? I learned how to put up websites. I learned how to do SEO. I learned about social media marketing. And so, you know, when I went to start a business, I thought, well, what am I, you know, for me, like my kind of back was against the wall. I was, I was on unemployment. I'd been fired from my job. I got this letter, unemployment's going to run out. And I'm like, what do you do? You know? And so, you know, I thought, well, what skills do I have? Well, I can do this. I can do this marketing for local businesses. So, so that's what I did, and uh, you know, I got a few clients. Um, and I think, you know, that's there's a good lesson in there for people when you're thinking about like if you need if you need money now, like if you're in a situation right now and you're listening to this and you're like, I need to generate money now, like you you need to make a, a I would make a list of like, well, what are my skills? What are the things that I know how to do that others might need help with that I could then just, you know, get somebody to pay me, help them to help them with, because that, that ability to just go out and, and help, you know, like get somebody as a client and provide that service can be pretty quick, Mm -hmm. right? Like you can, you can do that without having to set up a website, without having to, like without having to do anything else, like you can just start talking to your friends and people and, see, and probably find somebody who would hire you to do whatever your service is. Right? Mm-hmm. So, um, and what that kind of ties into what you were talking about earlier was, you know, I think as entrepreneurs, sometimes too, we, we have big dreams, right? We have big dreams. Really? His arms big, are up. Big, <laughs> big yeah, dreams. Big <laughs> dreams. And uh, I always try to tell people like, Big dreams are great. Like, it's great to have those, okay? But we need to uh, we need to start probably on a little smaller scale, right? And, and an example I can use from um, the, you know, the people that I deal with is uh, website, like website designers or SDO people. We will show them a way to get new clients, right? We'll give them a course to get new clients. Sometimes people will say, yeah, but how do I make this work when I have a hundred clients? And I'll say, well, how many clients do you have right now? Well, I don't have any. Like, well, (laughs) how about we focus on getting (laughs) one one client before (laughs) we worry about what we're going to do when there's a hundred, right? Mm. And, and so it's that, it's almost the same thing as like trying to find the perfect name and also like you're trying to figure out, well, how do I, like, what's going to happen if I need to scale this? And, and how am I going to do that? And what, what I found out in my experience is that 
trying to figure out how to scale something when you've never made a sale of whatever it is or mm-hmm. you don't even have one client is a really hard thing to figure out. And most of the time, whatever you figure out when you start doing it, it's going to be different anyway, right? But Absolutely. what is what is easy is if you're generating revenue, if you have cash flow coming in and and you're Biz, your busyness is getting to the point where you need to scale. It becomes really easy to figure that out because you have cash flow coming in. You have resources. Mm-hmm. You have the ability to make decisions. You know, so um, I think a lot of people need to just take a step back a little. Like, okay, yeah, the big goal is great, but what are the smaller steps that are that have to come before? Right? Like, what do I need to do first? Like, I should probably figure out if people even. You know, before I go into all this stuff about, you know, about figuring out everything down to the last detail, maybe I should ask people or try some kind of experiment to see if people would even buy this thing that I want to sell. Like, do I even know that they would buy it? Like, what's the, I love in the software industry, they have the minimum viable product. Mm. I think that's what people need to do first. What's, what's the minimum viable thing that you can just put in the marketplace and see if it's going to catch on and if it catches on then go with that right like but it saves you a lot of time and headache otherwise you're putting all this time energy into things and then maybe it doesn't catch on or doesn't sell and you're just kind of stuck right it's hard to pivot and adjust from that so true now when the pandemic happened how did that affect your business was it positive was it negative because you are online yeah so you know for the for the agency side of uh, my business, like, you know, it, it had a bigger impact. We had clients that were pausing, clients that were canceling. Uh, for the online side of the business, which is you know, selling courses, teaching people how to build an agency, that side really, like, took off. Like, all of a sudden, people were just, you know, we do a lot of things in our community. We have live trainings and do a marketing jam session show. So, like, all of a sudden, something that we would get maybe 50 people on like now we had 300 people (laughs) like we had this friday facebook live thing we did and we'd get maybe 50 60 people on it every friday you know at 3 p.m eastern but when the pandemic hit all of a sudden there's you know 300 400 people on this this live because what else are they going to do right and so um it was it was when that started to happen, that was really kind of like this moment of like, Oh my gosh, like we need to really like pick up our game and double down on providing the, providing the people in our community with things that are, that are, that are really going to help them now. Like we had to do a complete, I don't want to say it's not like a complete shift, but like, you know, we stopped, um, we stopped certain projects we had going because the pandemic just changed them, right? Yeah. They weren't going to work, you know, and we didn't, we as a company, um, and when I say we, I have a, my business partner, his name is Nick Ponte. We didn't feel right about like, we could have just forced some of those things out, but we didn't feel right because we were like, man, this is like, this isn't going to work now Yeah. because of what's going on. So we had to readjust and, I think that was part of the reason why we, um, why we've continued to have success now is because we've done that, right? Like we were talking to between ourselves and our team multiple times a day, every day, like just to talk about, well, what should we be like, A, should we like, should we even be selling anything? Yeah. If we are going to sell something, what should we be selling? If and how? Because everything was so sensitive. Free? yeah how do we position things like what's our language and um yeah so but it you know like we have for ourselves like we're, we're very fortunate because a lot of the things that we teach in our community are things that well i guess all of them are uh, all of the things we teach in our community are things that come from our actual agency right so unlike a lot of people who are just you know just maybe they're just showing you how to know how to do something that they've done once like we're actually doing these things with clients so we actually started we put our heads down first and said okay how do we continue to get clients during all this for our agency and we started testing things trying things out and as we started getting clients even when things were shut down we were we 
we started to get clients, not a lot, but we were getting one here, another there. Like we said, okay, now this is what we're going to go show everybody how to do because we know it's working. Like we're actually doing it right now during this pandemic and shutdown and now the reopening and we're getting clients. So we, we felt confident they could get the same results. And that's what happened with people in our community that couldn't get clients before the shutdown that now all of a sudden we're getting clients and you know, they're, I would say to use the word opportunity when it's about the pandemic, because I mm. think that sounds, can sound insensitive, right? Yeah. But it's more like what we've discovered is businesses are more receptive to what we're offering because they know they need the help. And they, they're they just like, just like you said earlier, people are calling like, we are trying to figure out a way to make money. How do we do this with the podcast? Like, they're open to hearing things that maybe they wouldn't have even considered before all this stuff. Right. Because they know they need the help. Absolutely. And, so, and I feel like they, they were the ones that were more resistant. Like, we don't want to go down that road. We don't want to go down this path to bring in this aspect of our business. But if your doors are shut down, you're brick and mortar, you need the Internet. Everybody is online right now. You want to make money? You go to the Internet. Period. That's it. <laughs> I mean, I had to pivot yeah, my well, business a little bit, but not... Um, not too, too much because everything I do was basically podcasting, but I do coach clients, um, business owners all year long. And it's a program I have called Momentum Coaching and I hold them accountable. So whatever their business is, we have like daily, hourly, depending on who they are and what they're doing, check-ins. But when the pandemic happened, I offered a three, a six, and a nine as well month program because... I have some clients in um, where they were in the middle of the country, their friends were making more on unemployment than at their real job. So, and a lot of them were moms and they're like, now's the time I can invest in a coach. Now's the time I can start the business I've always wanted to do. I mean, friends as well. I said, what do you want to do if you get laid off? Do it, do it now. What is holding you back? It's crazy. Yeah, no, I mean, you're you're right on with that. Like, we, we started kind of championing that in our community from the beginning of, like, look, we said, okay, everything shut down. Yeah. At some point, it's not going to be shut down. Like, this can't just go on forever. Mm-hmm. So the question you have to figure out now is, where are you going to be when it reopens? Mm-hmm. Are you going to be in the same spot you are today? Or... Do you do what entrepreneurs, I think, should do in these situations, which is, okay, what can I do? Like, what are, like, I might not be able to take all the actions I want to take, but what are the actions I can take right now during this time? You know, making that commitment to, to get better when everybody else is freaking out, right? Like, Mm -hmm. okay, let's let them worry about that. Let me just worry about like, okay, well, what can I do to move my goals and my business forward? And, um, you know, for me, part of that process was sticking to my routine, like big time, like 100%. (laughs) I'm the same. Like, and, and there are many days that I wake up and I think, Tom, what are you doing? Like everybody else is just like treating it like a vacation. Like they're just sleeping in. Like, why are you sticking to your team? Because I know like. I have some goals and I have some things that I, I want to do and sticking to my routine is imperative to those. And, you know, the thing I used to joke about with, um, with Nick all the time is like, we, you know, whenever, when everything reopens, we're going to take a vacation because we were working harder. We've been working harder during all this than we were before. Like we've been doing more things for our community. We've been doing more like, like online, um, you know, events and things like, so it's like, we felt like we got busier when all this was going on. And so we were like, well, when everything opens up, we're going to take a vacation when everybody else has to go back to work. And it brings me back to kind of that, uh, a saying that I just read this the other day in a book by Mark Devine. And I was like, I love the saying. It's basically the thing is we do today what others won't. So tomorrow we do what others can't. Oh, well, you said that earlier. So when it's a, we we do today what others won't, so tomorrow we can do what others can't. 
I love that. That's what you said when we first met earlier, right? When everybody was on the Zoom? Yeah. yeah. I love that. Yeah. And I appreciate you saying yeah, that you worked harder throughout the pandemic because I did as well. And I, I also said I'm taking that vacation when I'm done. I'm going to bust my behind right now. I am the most scheduled and organized person you will ever meet in your life. I am on a mission. And I was on another level. I brought in so much more business. I revamped programs. I mean, just personally and then professionally, I checked things off my list because at the end of the day, the only thing you have is time. Do you want to look back and regret that you were lazy and you slept in? First of all, I don't even know how to sleep in. I was never allowed to sleep in as a child. I was never allowed to take naps. I'm lucky. And like sometimes I take a nap and I'm like, I know I'm getting sick because that's just not in my routine ever. But I didn't want to look back and regret sitting around on my ass and not taking care of stuff. So I took care of it all, plus some. And I actually sat down and I made a long list of everything I accomplished throughout the pandemic. And I was like shocked. Like I didn't even realize how much I did because I was just ready to get it done. (laughs) And so I did a whole podcast episode on it as an example. Like we're still in it, you know? And then I think that it's like, um, you know, as an entrepreneur, this was a true test. Like, can you make it? How are you sensitive online? Because as somebody that runs a business online, like, how do you post being so sensitive? All these people are unemployed. People are sick. Every two minutes, you're seeing somebody's friend or somebody else dying or getting COVID. Like, how are you still showing up online? Like, when is the time to start? So I feel like we all had to kind of maneuver our own way. I mean, I have a couple clients that are in network marketing and they were like, how do I post, you know, where other people are just pitching, 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 pitching. And we're all like suffering, you know, like through a pandemic. And we're like, is that appropriate? Like, how do we pivot? So I think it was like a true learning experience for anybody that is on the internet, like to take away from like, okay, I learned this. Let's pivot this way. And Honestly, like with entrepreneurship, it's the same like trial and error. I have people that I follow online and they tried these programs because of what everything is, you know, what's going on right now and they failed. But then two weeks later, they did something else and it sold out. That's just how you roll as an entrepreneur. <laughs> this was their two, their yeah, true well, test. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is how you roll and you're, you're surrounded by, I think the pand- one of the things the pandemic did for me was like, you really got to see what businesses were really all about. Yeah. Because I know at at my companies, we were like, like, because we, you know, our courses at Offline Sharks are, you know, they're helping people grow and start a digital agency. And now with people in the in this shutdown looking for ways to make money, like they were starting to come to us, but we had to ask ourselves, like, do we even feel okay like selling them a course on how to yeah like because you know you you don't want someone like you've almost felt like well are they coming to us because they really want to do this or are they coming to us out of desperation and yeah we don't want to you don't you know because it, it's a it's a real business right like we're we're not a get rich quick like you have to build a business it takes time you're not going to just be able to flip a switch and do this and so you know, we spent a lot of time, you know, providing free assets, training resources, and just a lot of time talking to people about like, Hey, like, you know, you need to get this out of your, like, if you're, if you're in a situation where you need money now, like do not buy our stuff. Yeah. <laughs> like, like you have to figure something else out. Cause the, the chances are, this is going to take some time. Right. I mean, that's just, we're trying to build a real business here. So. I agree. And I do the yeah. same with, you know, when I don't feel aligned with somebody with creating their show or I have free resources. You can, it's a whole podcast school. It's free. Help yourself because yeah. again, as an entrepreneur and a business owner, you have to make that call. You know, you're saying, um, you know, it's not for you if somebody doesn't have the funds and you have to make that decision. It's not, you know, I feel like a lot of first time entrepreneurs, they just take it all, even if it's not aligned, it doesn't make sense. But at the end of the day, are you happy with that? You know, same thing posting online, like we're talking about, like, you know, you may have morals, 
great morals and ethics and everything, but the way you come across online may not sound that way, especially during the pandemic. Yeah. So it was really hard, like trusting. Yeah, no, you're, you're absolutely right. And the, and the bottom line is like, we want what's best for our customers. Like yeah. we don't want somebody to give us money if we don't think we can, if there's not a chance to help them su- to succeed. Right? Mm. I mean, that's really kind of the, that's what you want. It's just sort of, yeah, that's what we want. We want them to be successful. We want them to succeed. Right. And you know, one of the reasons I started my podcast, um, which is called what's the secret. I love that title. <laughs> like, Oh yeah. Thanks. It's, um, and it's mainly because, you know, like I wanted to have a way to get this information out about like how we're growing our business online. Mm-hmm. Because I think a lot of the gurus are, you know, it's like, I'll only show you when you pay me. Oh and yeah. A lot of them, a lot of them, you know, like their business is selling things on how to make money online. Yeah. And I'm just a, a website designer with no formal education that was able to take that skill and turn it into an online business. And so I just wanted to get that out there to show people like, look, there's another, like there, like what's really goes behind this, right? Like what the, without all the fluff and hype, you know, this is how we actually do it. And so, yeah, that's kind of what I talk about on there. And I think even it was became even more important to me during the pandemic because I was like, you know, so many people are rushing to start an online business and I think they can fall into the same trap, which is falling for the hype. Yeah. And you really need to understand that even though it's an online business, it's still a real business. Like, and be smart with your money. <laughs> yeah. And be, yeah. And be smart with your money. Like, yeah, absolutely. Especially now. I'm so excited you came on the show today. It was such a pleasure meeting you. Yeah. Where can everybody find you online and your podcast? Yep. So you can find me at TomGaddis.com. So my it's a T-O-M-G-A-D as in dog, D as in dog, I-S.com. And that's got all the information there. If you're, if you're a freelancer or a website designer, graphic designer, SEO person, social media person, and you want to see what we do at offlinesharks.com. That's where we have all our courses on growing and starting a digital agency. That's incredible. And you guys, I'm going to put all those links in the show notes so it's super accessible. You can click, go follow, make sure you subscribe, rate, review his amazing podcast. And thank you again for coming on the show. I really appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you so much, Colin. I was excited to be here. Aloha. Aloha. I love that. Your time is so valuable, and I really appreciate you carving out a little piece of your day to listen to today's episode. If you liked this one, please share it with someone who you feel needs to hear this message. And don't forget to tag me at The Happy Workaholic on Facebook and Instagram so I can feature you on my stories. Listening on Apple Podcasts? I would love it if you would leave me a review on today's show. Your input means so much and also helps me create more of the content you'll love. Want to continue today's conversation? You can join us in the Happy Workaholic Network Facebook group. Simply answer the questions and you're in. For more information on myself and to get the latest in business, LinkedIn, organizing, and podcasting news, sign up to receive my weekly newsletter at thehappyworkaholic.com. I hope that your day continues to be happy, healthy, positive, and productive, and I'll talk to you again soon.